welcome 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 back to my channel i'm mama eve it's been a good day it's been a great day it's been a fabulous day but once more important today is your day welcome tuesday tea with mama here is a tuesday tea with mama q and a just as I promised in prior videos that I would pick a Tuesday and I would answer some questions. And I do have, I think, about five questions that my viewers have um, left in my comments. And today, I just feel like I was just led to answer them. The first question have to do with my video with Four Thieves Vinegar. The question was, why do I add pins, needles, and nails to my Four Thieves Vinegar? Well, the answer to that is to, number one, chase away your enemies, and number two, that no matter what they try with their hands won't work. And number three is everything that they inflict on you will be inflicted on them. So that's the reason why I add my pins, my needles, and my nails. And of course, if you've been watching my videos, you know mama love numbers. And I use intervals of three very often. So I use three nails. And the three nails symbolize the Trinity. That's right. The Trinity. Right? So that's why I use the nails, the pins, and the needles. The next question I have was on my doll video. One of my viewers, um, really cute, asked the question, why no nose? Well, the answer to that is the older, um, voodoo dolls or working dolls they never had noses and i really don't know the answer why i guess maybe it wasn't important or maybe it may just alter something so if you look at the pictures of the um older um dolls that was used in hoodoo they didn't have a nose but I guess is no harm if you want to draw a nose on but for me I never add a nose the next video came from the thrift store shoppers beware the question how do I cleanse items that I bought before I bring them into my home that is very, very good question. Well, number one, my answer would be, it depends on what you bought. If you bought something like candles or something like candlestick holders or mirrors, simply use a solution of salt and water. Or if you have it, holy water or blessed water to cleanse these things. Now, if you have items such as clothes or um, shoes, then the first thing that I would do is I would smudge them. So either I would use Palo Santos or I would use sage. Simply, if possible, burn them outside and just smudge them away what do you mean smudge you would light for instance the sage and it will smoke 
then whatever items for instance if it's shoes you would just simply run them back and forth in the smoke because sage and palo santo both are used as purifying agents or you could use florida water or 47 11 you could use something like that to actually wipe down the shoes the clothes what i do all the time and i wish i had it here but what i do all the time is i keep a spray bottle and in that spray bottle i use florida water and a few drops of holy water and i keep it not only do i spray around my home spray around the business but I also spray myself with that. That would be perfect if you buy some kind of clothing, a shirt, a dress, a coat. It would be perfect. Just take you a spray bottle, put you some Florida water in there, and spray it. Now, if it's something that can't be wet, like leather or something like that, go back to the smudging. Make sure that you cleanse these things that you get from the thrift store down. The next question came from my St. Jude video. The question was, when you're doing the ritual, do you change the candle every day for nine days? And to that viewer, that also is a very, very good question question my answer is yes and my answer is no it depends on what kind of candle that you're burning for instance if you're burning a tea light candle or a penny candle you would use one per day now, if you're using any other kind of candle, for instance, a household candle, or maybe you might use a 50-hour um, a candle, then what you would do is you would burn them for one hour a day for nine days straight. If you have a jumbo candle, do it the same way. One hour a day for nine days. The most important thing about that ritual is that you start it on the same time every day. And another question I have um, about the doll video. This is a different viewer. The question was, can a person make more than one doll for themselves? Absolutely. You can make as many dolls as you want. However, just a little bit of, of um, advice. If you have a doll and you want to use it for several different reasons, then what you can do is make the doll white because remember white is the universal color and then you can you can pack the doll or different different veves or different prayers or different items you could put within that one doll for instance if you are doing a, if you want a doll for money, then you can do the veve for money. And for those that may not know what a veve is, go back to my video. What is a veve? You can put a veve in there, or you can put some kind of article. You can even use a dollar. You may use some kind of magnetic hematite. Or you may even want to put a lodestone in there. And let's just say you also want peace. So then I would add some lavender to the doll. 
I will put a sachet of lavender. Or you may want love. So how about adding some nice rose petals to your doll? So yes, you can have many dolls. But if you want to, you can make one doll, make it white, and then you can put many things in that one doll. And I'm just peeping at my question so I won't forget. Um, also, this is another candle question for my St. Martha the Dominator a video. The question, how long should I burn her candle? Once again, if pretty much, if you're doing any kind of ritual, if you don't use a small candle, you can always burn a candle for one hour. So within an hour, if you're using a tea light candle or a penny candle, that candle is going to be gone. So if you're using any other candle other than that, then just, it's okay. Burn it for an hour each day. Lastly, the question, what is the difference? And this one came from one of my Tuesday teas. What is the difference between spirit guide and Catholic saints? That is one of the best questions. A spirit guide would be a group it could be a group of spirits it could be more so a i'm trying to think of the best way to put it like a guardian angel but it may be a ancestor when we start talking about catholic saints most of the time not all of the time, but most of the times, Catholic saints was canonized through the Catholic religion. Now, that's not 100% because we have like, um, let me see, I want to say St. Expedite because St. Expedite was known for the Catholic religion, but not per se canonized through the Catholic church. That's just one example. So sometimes when we call saints, they're not, they didn't, they wasn't canonized through the church, through the church. However, with spirit guides, you can have native spirit guides. You can have um, many different types of spirit guides. So that, I hope I answered that question. That, no, it is a difference. The same way angels. Angels is another whole category. We sometimes call angel saint, like Saint Michael, Saint Raphael, Saint your realm but they're not really saints but they're archangels but one of the things that makes them a little different is because the church accept them more okay perfect example santa morte not canonized through the catholic church but we consider her a saint now, the thing about sainthood also is a lot of the Catholic saints was actual people that lived and during their lifespan, many miracles was performed through them. So I hope that cleared that question up some. And I wanna thank everybody for their comments I've been reading them all. I enjoyed them all. And I thank you that I haven't had a lot of, I haven't had none, no negative comments yet. So I thank you. 
for that also. Now I'm going to be showcasing two teas. The first one, meditation and fasting blend. This is brand new, hot off the press, y'all. This tea is wonderful for the times that you're fasting or time that you are meditating, times that you are reading scripture or reading a good book. This tea have um, organic green tea in it, but it also have real apples, blueberries, rose hips, and strawberries in it. So you actually have the dry fruit right in this tea. And the fruit that we use do not have no sulfur added. So this is a wonderful tea. You can get your vitamins, you can get your minerals, and you can get a good tasting tea. So you might want to try this. This is absolutely wonderful. Hot as well as cold. The next tea of the day would be another brand new tea. This is my Immunity Booster Blend. Every herb in this tea is going to help boost your immunities, especially in the days and the times that we are living in. This can benefit everybody, even children. So, of course, we know that the COVID is horrible. Hopefully and prayerfully, it is getting better. But this will build your immunities against colds, against flus, against infection. Just a lot. It's not just the COVID. So we all need to build ourselves up because we know every time we turn around, it is something. So this is our immunity booster. And we have echinacea. We have elderberries. We have uh, hibiscus, yarrow and a lot of other herbs in here. All of my herbs are organics, which mean they are not sprayed with pesticides. They have no chemicals. They are wonderful tea blends, both of these. And I do believe that you can benefit from both of these teas. So if you want this tea or any other teas or any other items, in my videos just hit my comments or my link or you can call me at 410-391-5765 or you can um, Facebook me at Eve's Botanical Religious Goods and we will ship this out to you and I appreciate you so so it's been a good day it's been a great day it's been a fantastic day but once more important y'all please share my videos and give me some comments and some thumbs up because i just adore you my honey buns have a great rest of this day because you are great kisses